Good morning everybody and welcome to morning prayer on a Thursday. We're, uh, we're outside again in the garden today. It was lovely and sunny when we decided to do this and it's a bit, a bit dull now um, but um, as long as it doesn't pour with rain we'll be okay. So this morning Thursday we um, will be looking at or if you want to join in at home with the psalm. The psalm set for today is 115 115. And the Old Testament reading is 1 Samuel 2, chapter 2, 27 to the end. So 1 Samuel, chapter 2, 27 to the end. And the Gospel, which we will be reading uh, in a little bit, is from Luke's Gospel, and it's chapter 20, verses 9 to 19. And today <coughs> is a commemoration. And it's the commemoration of St. Osmond. And we thought we'd read a little bit about St. Osmond because St. Osmond is one of our local saints um, from Salisbury. Um, so the history of Osmond, I'll read a little bit about him. The history of Osmond's early life is lost in time. And he's first known through his appointment as a Chancellor of England in 1072. He's said to have arrived in England with William the Conqueror. Um, but life histories of Osmond um, before 1072 do exist, but they're largely unreliable. Osmond was made Bishop of Salisbury in 1078, and his diocese included Dorset, Wiltshire, and Berkshire. The headquarters of the diocese was Old Sarum, and I'm sure you've probably been to Old Sarum, amazing ruins up there, and the, 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 the ruins of the old cathedral there. It was a fortress rather than a city, placed on that high hill, surrounded by the massive walls, the remains of which you can still see. He completed the cathedral of Old Sarum, consecrating it on the 5th of April, 1092, but five days later the roof was destroyed in a thunderstorm. Osmond is famous for instigating cathedral reform and improving administration. He initiated a cathedral chapter. He's the one who, who um, found the idea of cathedral chapters and constitutions and instituted the positions of dean, chancellor and presenters and treasurers and had their duties clearly defined. It's quite modern in that sense, yeah, you know, job descriptions. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, 32 cathedral canons were also created to be advisors to the bishop, um, carrying out missionary work and other duties in the area and in the diocese. Um, and these ideas came to be adopted by many other dioceses. So he's really sort of founder of modern um, uh, diocesan structures. Um, he also took up um, positions in the royal court um, and was involved in the preparation and evaluation of the Doomsday Survey. Um, and was there when it was presented to King William in 1086. Um, at one time he disagreed with Archbishop Anselm in a dispute concerning investitures in 1095. Um, however, he reputedly asked for forgiveness from the Archbishop and later sided with him against the King in a subsequent church-state dispute. Um, so he, his love of learning and his books led to the creation of a sizable library for himself and his canons at Salisbury. By enforcing cathedral reform, Osmond instigated a style of governance that spread quickly throughout the south of the country, and crucial to his theology and position was the idea of the cathedral as the mother church of the diocese. Wow, mm. quite, a, quite a reformer and change and instigator yes. of yeah. a very, you know, governance mm. is central to all, <laughs> you know, still central to all sort of charities and dioceses and... Uh, organisations. And the instigator of Mothering Sunday? Oh, the instigator Maybe. of Mothering Sunday. Yes. Yeah. Yes, which has turned into something mm. else, yes, but uh, that is what mm. it was originally. Mother Church, yes. The Mother Church, yeah. Mm. Mm. Right. So, let's, let's pray. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it. Who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. 
I've taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind. To bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations. I have called you in righteousness. So our Gospel reading, which is from Luke 20, Luke chapter 20, verses 9 to 19. He began to tell this parable. A man planted a vineyard and leased it to tenants and went to another country for a long time. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants in order that they might give him his share of the produce of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Next he sent another slave. That one they also beat and insulted and sent away empty-handed. And he sent yet a third, this one also they wounded and threw out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son, perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they discussed it amongst themselves and said, This is the heir, let us kill him, so that the inheritance may be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, Heaven forbid. But he looked at them and said, What then does this text mean? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the scribes and chief priests realized that he told the parable against them, they wanted to lay hands on him at that very hour, but they feared the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a very short reflection on that reading then. Last week, last week we heard um, a very similar parable. We heard about Lazarus and the man at the gate. Um, and uh, Lazarus going to hell and the, the poor man going up to heaven. And that plea from Lazarus, well, if you can't save me, save my family, send someone from the dead. And this is, this is a very similar parable. This tells the same story, really. It's the Son of Man who will come. God will send his Son to show us the way. And there will be those of us who follow and listen to what the Son has to say, what God has to say, and there'll be those of us that don't. Um, and the consequences are quite uh, clear. Our inheritance as Christians is an inheritance of a life ever after, of, of being in what we call heaven. Um, we don't know what that is yet, um, because no one's been back from there except Jesus. And he tells us um, that there is a life after this life. And that's our inheritance. But only if we follow the Son. And these two parables and others are a warning to us um, not to be stray, not to stray from the way, uh, to listen to God, to read our Bibles, to. And it's also about following the way in life as well. Oh, yes. So absolutely. that the way of the path of healing and the path of justice and the path of righteousness. And if we don't follow in that way, life, society, humanity, uh, community collapses. Oh my goodness, aren't and, we seeing that? <laughs> and we see it. We just um, see it. We just yeah. see it. Um, and it is a confusing world. Mm, it is a mm. difficult and confusing world. We, you know, the, the, the trouble we see all around the world. Mm. Um, because who do, who do you believe? You hear different reports about different things and we've got all of this about um, the news being fake and but there is one steadfast there is just one way and we as Christians that's what we have to do we just have to follow the way Jesus tells us and exactly as Andrew was saying the way of righteousness of justice for everybody 
and to love everyone, to love our neighbours. Gosh, isn't it just the same story every time? And how many times does Jesus have to tell these stories to mm, get it into mm. us that that's, that's what we have to do? Anyway, I did say a short reflection. Mm. So there we are, a short reflection. Shall we pray? So, Father God, by your grace we are your children. And through your Son we are redeemed from sin. And in the Spirit we are sent out as Christ's witnesses and servants of your kingdom. And so we pray as we hear those words that we may listen to your Son and follow his ways. And truly discern what that means for each of our lives and for our church and for our world. We pray for the church and its life and its mission everywhere, giving thanks for our bishops and ministers and for Christians in all places. We pray for those in our own community. We pray for the church nationally and internationally at this time of crisis and uncertainty in its ministry that we may be a beacon of hope and life and healing. We pray for the suffering church wherever there is violence and pain and give thanks for its courage and resilience to bring hope and healing in the midst of conflict. May our lives bear witness to your gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of nations and all those who bear responsibility, great responsibility, for our Queen and country and government and the nations of the world that they may act with justice and righteousness for the good of all people. We pray for those who are suffering the consequences of violence and economic injustice and for all who seek to bring relief and hope and life and rebuilding and reconciliation. Make our lives to be of service to your kingdom that that is coming amongst us and guide us to be ministers of that kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all people in need at the moment, and particularly those who are anxious, those who are suffering from COVID or have relatives suffering. We pray also for those many suffering in difficult situations like in Yemen and Sudan and Syria, Iraq and so many places and for those who are caring for them. Make us eager to help whoever needs us, where we are and wherever there is need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we give thanks for all that is good in this life and for all the gifts that you have given to everyone. Help us to value those gifts to nurture the gifts that you give us and to use them well in your service and in the service of others. Help us to appreciate each other's talents and glorify God in the way that we use them. And remember those who've died with love and thanks for those we have known and also praying for those who've lost their lives suddenly or violently in recent days and all who mourn. Grant us with them and all the saints a share in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And the collect for a Thursday. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, 
that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Amen. Amen. Hopefully see some of you for real on Sunday. Bless you. Bye. Bye.